Hello and good evening. It is June 29th, Tuesday, 2021. This video is about uh, climate change and it's a continuation of my last video on food security. Uh, so I'm going to get right to it then. Uh, let me first pull up the um, a video here. Okay, so um, what um, I'm considering is that there's... Um, is that the initial phases of uh, of climate change as an agenda? That the initial phases of it are the weather is man-made and it's by and large going to be contrived in some way. And it's also going to be uh, portions of it are a hoax. You know, for example, the some portions of the uh, let's say the uh, the hypothesis behind the land flooding out everywhere and the polar ice caps melting. That's part of the hoax concerning climate change and there's other aspects to it that are hoaxes but in in other um the initial phases of it are contrived in that the weather is manipulated so the initial phases of climate change are a combination of hoaxes and manipulated weather and as far as other hoaxes are concerned let's say uh concerning climate change would be the gradual increase in temperature over time of of the mean temperature, you know, globally, let's say, which they keep claiming is going up, but there's, you know, there's cooling here and there, and there's intense weather going on, this is due to the manipulations in the weather that are occurring right now. But on the other hand, the future, things will be different, and the weather will actually, the climate change stuff will start to become more real, as there starts to become two major factors at play, which I'll discuss here briefly. One factor is the magnetic field failing, which will affect the weather quite a bit because the particles will slowly deteriorate. It's going to take time, but as the magnetic field fails, the particles in the air and, and or uh, any sort of solid particle, which is everything around us, responds to the magnetic field. As that magnetic field fades out, you will, it will slowly and gradually fade out. You will have basically um, um, entropy and deterioration of 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 particles that have mass to them and so uh, therefore that would affect weather because it would say let's take an example uh, when, when rain falls it needs dust um, it can grab hold of dust let's say to make it naturally rain they will kick up dust from a tree let's say or a forest it will kick up dust from a forest but those particles will be reduced in mass so there would be um, because the magnetic field failing will reduce the mass of a particle and make it weaker it will be more flimsy, um, so it will, uh, there'll be less, uh, not, well, the, the particles, I believe, will have less mass to them and less strength than they do now, because the magnetic field holds together atoms, and the atoms need the magnetic field to hold their structural integrity. So let's take an example, let's go back to the dust. The dust, the forest kicks up dust to create rain naturally, uh, but the dust in the future will probably, in the you know, a couple hundred, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of years from now, but let's say in the future, um, will be uh, a weaker form of dust that will kick up and it will lack some integrity. Um, that's one distinct possibility of that. And it's like, okay, so if uh, there's less high pressure, they can, there's next, there'll be less naturally occurring high pressure systems, but there can be man made high pressure systems. So that's on the other hand. The weather in the future will be much more probably rigidly. Uh, manipulated because in order to make a high pressure mass with a failing magnetic field you have to manipulate it so that's one aspect of it is that this the magnetic field failing will definitely affect the weather now the other aspect to it is the sun gradually decreasing its temperature which i think will happen what i think will occur is that the sun will gradually decrease its temperature oh let me turn the video back on, or the player back on the sun will gradually decrease its temperature and will eventually probably crash to the earth is what i think will actually occur uh, the sun is close to us. That's what I think will occur. Is the sun will cool gradually. The cooling of it will affect all the weather systems globally. Um, <clears throat> and so while that's occurring, the weather will get affected because, you know, temperature is dependent upon the sun. Uh, water currents are important to look into because water currents, let's say, for the Pacific Northwest have cool air that, uh, that rises from the water and it cools and condenses quickly and drops its rain on the side of, uh, you know, the, the rainy sides of Oregon and Washington. And the Gulf of Mexico, on the other hand, goes up to the east coast of the United States 
uh, hugs it and it its humid air rises quicker because it's humid and it's hot the humid air rises quickly off of the ocean it drops its rain uh, kind of like a rainforest would almost rainforest they have hot humid air rising and then the uh, hot humid air forms clouds it drops its rain by the time you get to 30 degrees north south latitude the rain does not form as easily and uh, it, the clouds from the tropics have dropped all the rain because the hot air hot moist air has risen and is condensed and dropped itself as rain and then that's why you have 30 north south as the horse latitudes that have no uh that lack um that lack uh, rain so anyway uh long story short the the sun will will affect the water temp which will um and or all the weather systems, and it will also affect, of course, all of life on the on the Earth. So what's going to happen is, is in order to cope with this, the weather will be much more man-manipulated than it is now even, and it will be, life itself will be dependent upon man-made inventions, most likely, to continue organic life. And this is why we go into the transhumanist thing as well, and also why they go into more weather manipulations in the future if you at least want organic life. Uh, <coughs> one way of looking at it is, is that they're going to need floating tokamak reactors and uh, and or also artificial suns. So we have some things on YouTube about sun simulators like like the uh, picture right up here, uh, which is possibly a fake sun. They have things like this available in the testing phase. So that's one way of coping with it. And the other way of coping with it is by also creating artificial magnetic fields to cope with uh, the magnetic field gradually failing. Um, so those are two things. So right now, um, as I said before, climate change is a hoax, and I can tell it's a hoax, too, as well in some regards for some portions of it, because not only is there man-made manipulations, but CC means climate change, and CC is 33, and 33 to me is the hoax code. Uh, as I discussed in previous videos what the hoax code exactly means, so this way you know 13 and 33 are usually the hoax codes. Um, on a rare basis, I've seen 5 as a hoax code as a number, but usually it's 13 and 33, and it's done for a reason, which I explained in previous videos. So we have that. Um, so let me just get to uh, my notes here just to make sure that I'm covering all these topics. Um, okay, so the sun's temperature, well, maybe we'll skip that. Um, well, I won't skip it, but. So this is the thing, is that um, the um, climate change will still be blamed on humans due to um, the sun's temperature going up and down can be something that can be blamed on humans, but in actuality it's the sun gradually depleting its fuel and cooling is what's going to end up happening. It's not, it's not going to become a red giant like they show in uh, books. It's going to become more like a, a, a massive tokamak reactor that loses its fuel that's nearby and it's going to if it does lose all power, it's going to basically eventually cause itself to crash into the flat plane. So, anyway, um, so, um, I believe that the elites have uh, known about these problems in advance, and they've planned some of it in advance, and they know that this is going to happen. And we can tell this because, one, they have some of the schematics built already for how to produce food in the future, as I disclosed in the last video, food production. How, how, how they're going to make food more artificial, the transhumanist aspect to it, and also um, the, um, just the inventions that they've come up with, with manipulating the weather as well, and, and along with, um, as, I, as, I, as I have discussed in this video, the floating tokamak reactors and or the floating artificial suns. Um, now, how this also ties into the agenda is that the old agenda has people living in the old America 2050 map, which is reduced population living in condensed urban settings. Um, the reason why that would be the case in the distant future is because, one, it's easier to manage people in an urban setting. Two, if they do have issues with the sun and the magnetic field, they can create a local regionalized magnetic field and a local regionalized sun and have things, they can't create an unlimited number of those two things because they're very difficult to create. If you think of how difficult it is to create, a, you know, a massive power source that floats in the sky that provides light and heat, it's not an easy undertaking. And also to create a, um, a fake magnetic field, that is also very difficult. So those are two things that they can create, that and the weather machinery to go along with it to deal with the weather that's outside of where you're located. or And or also the fact that they 
I could do it. Yeah. And or the fact that uh, it would be easier also to have a domed city that would be enclosed from the uh, from the new weather that would be created off of the magnetic field failing gradually and the sun uh, gradually losing it, uh, temperature and heat. So we have that aspect to it. So it's easier to consolidate people into cities. Um, or it's, be it's better to plan ahead and to consolidate people into cities, which is why we see maps such as the Old America 2050 map looking the way it does. Um, so those, those things will only be built probably in urban regions. It's just good planning that way. <clears throat> so um, the... Uh, I think that that's about it. The, um, I'm just trying to see here if we have anything I'm missing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it in a, in a rough idea of what's going to happen is that they're going to take, um, climate change in the initial stages is contrived and or a bunch of hoaxes, but in the future it will be more realistic, but it will still be blamed on humans because they can use it as a very valid excuse to say, hey, you know, the sun, they're not going to blame the sun at all, and they're not going to blame the magnetic field. They're going to blame people on the problem, uh, and they're going to help create this problem by creating things. Unfortunately, the climate change agenda and or the green agenda portions of it are hypocrisy, and they can also blame people for what occurs based off of these some of these green technologies that are not really green, like batteries with the cars or the EVs, you have to put, sometimes you put more energy than you actually get out of it. Or even things like biofuel, like biodiesel, for example, you put more energy into it than you actually get out of it. So it starts to become a bit hypocritical and a bit of a, a fallacy that you can do these things and do them green. Um, so that's one way of looking at it. So that's probably what's gonna end up happening in the future, I think, is that there's gonna be a drive to urbanize people to create more infrastructure to deal with the weather um, and to ultimately keep going with the climate change hoax to a certain extent and blame people for the problems that are very much outside of humanity's control such as the magnetic field gradually failing uh, and or the sun losing its temperature. The sun is a god-given tokamak, massive tokamak reactor is what I believe it to be. It's and it's nearby and eventually that thing is going to lose its power which is why in the book of revelation it it, uh, it darkens and that's going to affect all of the climate on the earth because the ocean has a dependency on uh, temperature um, and this is as i said in the last video why they have a saying such as a cold day in hell and you also have have the fact that a cold day in hell has to do with the quantum computers too on another topic because it, those atoms get really cold to get to the quantum level and to get into hell to communicate there. Anyway, so that's a, just a different topic, but the earth itself gets cold, so it's, you know, saying cold day in hell, ha ha ha. <laughs> Very interesting how that actually fits in there. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoy your day, and, thought, and I hope you all like this video, right? Take care and have a good evening.